Hey guys, it's Dr. Cody Roll with Tech for Psych. So I'm calling this video Mind Lift Review Number Two because it's a follow up to a video that I put out in August about Mind Lift, which is a software program that you can use with the Muse headband for neurofeedback training. You can train things like uh, attention, performance, improve mood, lessen anxiety. And I've had about six months to use this program, use it with clients, talk to experts, really dive in deep on how the program works, do a lot of reading on neurofeedback. So I felt like it was time to do a follow-up video on the MindLift program that went more in depth than the original video did. If you guys are interested in doing this type of work with me, head to www.techforpsych.com coaching. And if you have questions or comments, leave them in the section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Tech for Psych and hit that bell so you get notifications when I upload new content. I really appreciate everybody's participation. Lately, the, all the emails, uh, YouTube comments, and other messages that I've been getting have taught me a lot, and I really enjoy interacting with you guys, and you guys are really making Tech for Psych a really special place, so very much appreciate it. Hey, it's Dr. Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. Today, we're taking a real in-depth look at MindLift, now that I've had a chance to use it more with clients and talk to the leading experts and developers of the program. First of all, I want to give a big shout out to Tobias Heiler and his team at Brain Boost. They were a huge help in understanding this program. I'll have an interview video coming out next week with them that you should all check out. If any of you are in the German cities that you see now on the screen, I would recommend checking out their website and consider getting a consultation from them. Maybe spread the word about what they're doing over there. It's incredible. There will be a course on mobile neurofeedback released through MindLift that's coming up soon that I know Brain Boost had a big part in, so be on the lookout for updates on that as well. Okay, so jumping into the MindLift mobile neurofeedback platform that you use with the Muse. First, we see the dashboard scene that I showed in my original MindLift video. I've put the link below if you want to review that first video before diving into this one on MindLift. First of all, let's take a look at adding a new client. There was a point here that I wanted to make before doing anything else when being a professional mobile neurofeedback practitioner like this, it's important to take a good history with your client and really know what they're targeting with neurofeedback. Maybe they've had some kind of injury or trauma and you're working to get them back to normal, or maybe they're quite healthy and looking more for performance enhancement. Whatever the case, it's important to take a good history here and document what you're trying to improve with neurofeedback. The cool thing about the MindLift program is that they have this questionnaire system that you can use before and between sessions and after to track symptoms. Uh, neurofeedbacks like going to the gym, you're likely not going to be able to see results for the first week or two. And on top of that, unlike being able to look at the mirror or step on the weight scale and see the results, you're going to need to track things using these questionnaires so that you and the client can talk intelligently about the progress that they've made by using that data. Okay, so a little background here before we jump into the preset protocols of MindLift. I think that it's important at this time to discuss brain mapping. So as you can imagine, it's cool to have a snapshot of your brain before starting a program like this. It feels precise and customized. It makes you feel like you really understand what your own brain is doing so that you can get better results. And companies like BrainBoost do do this. BrainBoost does do this. Um, unfortunately, the Muse system alone is not quite ready for a full clinical grade snapshot of the brain, which is called quantitative EEG or QEEG for short. There's certainly people out there who are playing around with the Muse to hopefully have a type of QEEG brain mapping program in the near future to work with, but it's still a work in progress. Now, Brain Boost uses hardware and software to include Brain Master and a 32 channel Nexus system. One of the reasons Muse by itself is not ready is because it doesn't have the number of sensors required in traditional quantitative EEG clinical practice, and it doesn't have the software that makes use of this relatively expensive pay-per-use quantitative EEG database out there that's required for traditional EEG brain mapping. Basically, there are these databases out there with thousands of neurofeedback patients' brain data loaded into a system that discovers averages in power spectral density and other measures in EEG data to define averages of the general population. So when you get your brainwave data measured and analyzed by one of these systems, it reports something called a Z-score that indicates your brainwave differences in standard deviations away from the average of the general population. So there are two good things that I want to discuss here in regards to mobile quantitative EEG future. The good news is that there are people developing screening tools and mobile EEG platforms to get clinical grade quantitative EEG 
in your home relatively soon. The additional good news is that for the type of neurofeedback training that you and your clients are doing in MindLift, you do not necessarily need a quantitative EEG at this time. So the Z-score of quantitative EEG is basically how many standard deviations a person is away from the average brainwave levels. This can be important for diagnosing brain illness and getting people back to normal by using neurofeedback training, but that's just it, back to normal. So the neurofeedback protocols that use traditional quantitative EEG and Z-scores are designed to take a disordered person back to average. And think about average. So imagine you're sitting in a chair, not excited, not anxious, just sitting there. That's normal. That's what that type of neurofeedback training, the Z-score neurofeedback training off of quantitative EEG is taking you back to. But what if you wanted to take your brain to the next level in terms of focus, meditation, or deep relaxation? That's not normal. Uh, that's where we use something called amplitude training. So instead of using a quantitative EEG with Z-scores, the MindLift system calibrates every time you do a session and uses something called a multiplier, threshold, and time delay dampening. It takes your baseline EEG amplitude levels, multiplies them by a predetermined number to create a threshold, and encourages your brain during a neurofeedback program to reach the threshold by rewarding you every time you do so. The reward in the program takes the shape of advancing you through the game that you're playing or advancing you through the video that you're watching. The time delay dampening is an effect where the program takes a little bit to respond to the brain's changes in order to continually encourage it to reach certain brainwave levels for the reward. This forces the brain to keep going through an intrinsic learning process to further enhance the amplitude changes that are desired and preset in the program. Now you can change the percentages of reward on the program before you or your client start it. However, Tobias would recommend somewhere around a 55% response rate to be optimal, making it not too hard but also not too easy at the same time. Because the program calibrates every time the client starts his session and adjusts throughout the session, there there isn't much reason to change the percentage response rate from session to session unless the client has complaints about the difficulty level. I think we're going to see a lot of really cool mobile brain mapping tools related to amplitude training in the near future that should get people even more engaged in this type of software. Okay, so now finally getting into the different specific protocols that are preset on MindLift to include attention training, performance training, mood training. These are really great preset training levels that uh, use different ratios of brain frequencies to enhance certain subjective states of the brain. Okay, so getting to actually setting up the sessions, after you've registered the client and set the symptom tracking questions, you can determine the neurofeedback protocol based on their needs. Uh, you'll notice right away that there's a toggle switch for basic mode and advanced mode. The basic mode is designed from recommendations from neurofeedback companies like Brain Boost as protocols that you can use to do at home. Uh, the targeted brainwave settings, session length, and session frequencies are based on neurofeedback research literature and practical experience. The advanced mode allows for advanced practitioners who feel like they have the experience and knowledge necessary to set up custom neurofeedback protocols and have more flexibility. And these custom protocols are most often based off of subjective assessments or quantitative EEG. Let's start with the basic mode attention training. As you can see, it inhibits theta, high beta, and rewards SMR, which makes sense as high beta would signify distraction, theta would signify drowsiness, and SMR is a specific alpha rhythm over the motor strip that means you're sitting still. So you're kind of hitting that sweet spot for attention training. I mean, these are a little bit over generalizations, but that's basically what we're shooting for here. Now, if you look at the advanced mode, you'll see that the targeted frequencies are there with the percentage reward rates so that you can set the threshold for the training. And something interesting here is if you take a look at the training and reference channel settings, something that Tobias told me that was interesting is that the original Muse had two micro USB ports on the back. For those of you that had that device and remember that one, um, and you could actually plug in extra ports, you know, extra electrodes into the back of those ports. But the new Muse headbands just have that right auxiliary micro USB port. So with the new Muse headsets, the setting doesn't matter as much. And Tobias said that using the TP10 as reference is fine in most cases. Um, most users won't have to worry about changing the reference in active electrodes. 
or, or even the percentage of reward rate because the program is constantly calibrating to the individual and the only reason to change the reward rate is if that client complained that it was either too easy or too hard to progress through the game or if you're really advanced and you know what you're doing and you feel like the custom reward rate is required. But for the most part, the settings that are auto set there are you know, good to go. You, for most cases, you could just use the basic mode and get really good neurofeedback training with this program. So similar to the basic mode attention training, we have different settings. Um, taking a look at the mood enhancement setting, they call this the frontal stabilization protocol. And the idea is to promote mid beta in the frontal lobes while limiting uh, high beta, which is reflective of anxiousness, and uh, theta, which is reflective of being drowsy. So you want that nice middle ground for that mood enhancement optimization. The next setting would be performance enhancement. So in this one, they're trying to promote deep relaxation and peak performance. And in this protocol, they inhibit uh, anxiety-related high beta again and reward flow state promoting theta and alpha. In this setting, the relaxation training, it's more like uh, meditation and it promotes that self-regulation self by rewarding alpha and inhibiting theta and high beta. So they want you to narrow in on that alpha brainwave frequency to promote the relaxation, which is pretty similar to what you do in the meditation training. So when clients log into the app, they simply calibrate, choose the game that they want to play, and then they undergo brainwave optimization via the operant conditioning that we talked about by trying to get the game to move. Uh, the settings that the provider puts down before the session are what the session will train. And it makes sense to do different trainings at different times of the day. I've even set up different accounts for one client so they can choose which training they want to do that day, like attention versus relaxation training. Now, as the provider, you are notified via email when they train. You can check how many sessions they have left in the training program so you can reset when necessary. Uh, you get a report called uh, the lifter score, which is a fun metric to see how often they were able to reach the threshold brainwave amplitude levels in the training that you set and actually change the levels of thresholds. And I find that clients really actually like to hear about their increasing scores on the training sessions and hopefully decreasing scores on the subjective reports to indicate their progress. If you recall, the subjective reports are the uh, questions that we set up at the beginning of the video where uh, clients will say, hey, this week I was feeling uh, irritated or this week I, I felt better with more energy, that type of thing. And what I find most rewarding is when a client tells me they were just going about their daily life, like having the in-laws over for Thanksgiving or something, and just noticing that their stress levels are way down compared to normal. And that's really should be the ultimate goal is like, how do you function in your everyday life? Is this adding to that? You know, the scores are important. Uh, keeping track of things are important, but really how, how is this affecting, affecting your functioning throughout the day? Again, is the most important, most rewarding part of this whole process. As for training length, there's suggestions in basic mode. I would say that people need to train several times a week for about a month to get noticeable results. Again, if you're interested in using MindLift or finding a provider that uses MindLift, be sure to check out their website at www.mindlift.com. Uh, they do do neurofeedback consulting for providers or brain boost if you want to start your own clinic. And there's a growth toolkit to help you build up your neurofeedback practice. And the MindLift Academy is coming soon. They're doing a video series and going to have some other resources to help teach people how to do neurofeedback more in depth than I have here. So take a look at MindLift and Brain Boost and let me know if you have any questions. Also, don't forget that I'm taking clients, so feel free to hop over to www.techforsych.com slash coaching if you want to work with me personally. I really appreciate everybody's attention. I have an interview with Brain Boost coming out next week, and I hope you guys enjoy that as well. Thanks so much. Dr. Cody Raw with Tech for Psych, signing off.